So now we have the old exhaust completely off and now we're going to add the new exhaust. This is day two. This is day two. Should be a grand old time. So I got that exhaust manifold off of eBay and it came with all the hardware, it even came with gloves and the exhaust manifold gasket. <clears throat> okay, so first, <clears throat> as you saw earlier, I cleaned off the head as best I could, and then you put the exhaust manual gasket in. Now this is this is a little snippet of me putting on the the hanger for the exhaust manifold. <clears throat> Remember that bolt I told you it was hard to get to. Well, this is how you actually put that together. And all I did was go look at the old one and compare it to what I had for the new one and I made it work as best as I could. And there you can see how it's set up. Pretty straightforward stuff. Okay, so now we're going to go to the actual three studs of the exhaust. And you just want to just drive the studs in as tight as you can. Okay, so the next step would be to put your O2 sensor in. I figure I'd do it with the exhaust manifold out of the car because it's a lot easier. You don't have to, you know, reach down and in. And everything's right there, and nice and straightforward in front of you. So you get some anti seize lubricant on there, put them on the threads nice and good. Just coat them like that. You don't want to go too much and definitely try not to get any on the sensor itself. If you manage to somehow get it on your sensor, clean it off. Make sure there's none of it showing up. All right, so now with the O2 sensor on, we can drop the new exhaust manifold in. Shiny that looks. Oh, it looks so good. This whole project was very fulfilling for me because I knew this exhaust leak existed for years. And to finally get the new one on, it felt so good after I was done this project. It was like a little bit of, you know, like serotonin released in my brain. I just felt so accomplished after this project was done. So. <sighs> Now we're going to go ahead and put the uh, the nuts on. Now I forgot to put some anti seize on here in the video, but I did go back. I took the took the nuts off and I put anti seize on the threads. So I know what you're seeing, but I did go back. I, I caught my mistake. I just didn't want to record it all over again. So now this this <laughs> this one hanger down here at the bottom was kind of a pain in the neck to get to, but. Um, what I ended up doing was taking the arm off of the manifold, screwing it in, into the block, and then putting that part back together. It wasn't too bad doing it this way. So just a heads up, a little tip or a hint for you, if that's what you're uh, up against, just, just take it off and then put it back together. And then just tighten everything down. All right, so now, I am going to tighten everything up. Yep. And I tightened everything by hand. Well, until then, I realized I have my electric ratchet. I've been forgetting about my electric ratchet so many times. I'm like, why am I doing this by hand? So anyway, you want to start by working on the middle bolt or nut first and then work your way alternating to the outside so I did that hand tight or just got it tight snug enough and then once I got that done I went back with my torque wrench and I torqued it down to 44 foot pounds of torque 44 foot pounds of torque so it's not crazy tight but it's definitely it's good and snug So I started with my second one to the right 
and then once that snapped in, then I went to my left side. Mm -hmm. And that's it, that's all there is to it. Once this is done here, then um, we just move on down to the rest of the exhaust. And it's important to make sure you tighten these down to the right spec. You, you over tighten it, you run the risk of uh, exhaust leak or warping something. You just want to work with what you got, what it tells you to do, just tighten it down. Here, here I am tightening down the O2 sensor to spec. Uh, this was um, 38 foot pounds of torque. So, again, not bad. And then once you got that snugged in, you want to plug in your O2 sensor. Just it should just click right in, straight forward like that, and that's it, you're done. All done. All right, so now, oh yeah, we're working on the downstream O2 sensor. So same deal as before. Put your anti-seize lubricant on around the threads. All the way around like that. Just start screwing it in. Work that down too. I think at this point, Bob was there um, helping me. The first day he, he he was busy, he couldn't come, but he came the second day to help me install it. So he's the one holding the camera at this point. So make sure you tighten that down to 38 too, 38 foot pounds. All right, now we're uh, we're getting ready to put on the downpipe. It's so weird the way that Nissan designed that downpipe, how flat it is in some points. Okay, so you you might notice a little bit difference. Earlier I was putting studs in by hand. Um, at this point, uh, the studs or the the nuts for the studs weren't going in very well. So I was like, well, let me just chew these bolts. These bolts end up going in pretty easy. So I was like, all right, let's just ride with that. Um, that's the reason why it looks different there. Um, so, but you'll see later on that I actually do go back to the studs. So now we're doing the rest of the downpipe and the Y assembly. And you see Bob down way down there. He's mounting that end. And we had a little bit of trouble because the way the hangers were set up on the car, we actually had to take the whole assembly and push it upwards past the downpipe that we installed before that. And then we were able to manage to get it on. Okay, now this is one of the mufflers. I think this is Bob installing driver's side now there's those uh, those rings go around and what those do basically is as you tighten it down those rings compress to help seal all the way around that exhaust so nothing leaks out so here we are tag teaming working together now I'm still I believe at this point I'm down uh, still tightening up the bolts uh, between the downpipe and the resonator assembly. Here's Bob doing the other side. Same deal. The, got the ring gasket. Put the bolts in place. And that's it. I mean, that's all there really is to this uh, exhaust. It was really just a bunch of bolts loosening and tightening. A couple hacksawing, but it was pretty okay. Bob, I tell you what, Bob is becoming a pro. That exhaust, he's getting so good at it. So yeah. <clears throat> now, the bolts for the rest of the exhaust, I didn't really torque down per se. I just tightened it as best as I could. These are grade eight bolts. Um, you really don't want to get anything lower than a grade eight and just tighten it down as hard as you can, really. You know, you don't want no exhaust leaking, so. Here I am using my electric ratchet. Make sure that thing's good and tight. Same as the back, the back ones here. I just went as hard as I could with it. And I was like, you know, it's good enough. Those 
two bolts, that's it. And two bolts on the other side. Oh, look at that exhaust. Just looking so good. Looking so good. Okay, so there's a lot that happened before I actually shot this shot. But in the answers of trying to save time, I was like, you know what, I'm just going to let it be. But I ended up snapping one of those bolts, those silver bolts. Turns out that was like a grade 4.8 or something bolt on it. It said 4. No, I think it was 5. It said 5. So I was like, I don't know why they did that. Um, but again, I couldn't complain because that was from the, uh, the downpipe assembly. Those bolts came from the downpipe assembly, which had the other cat, catalytic converter on so I ended up putting the studs back on as you saw earlier in the video and just using that and it worked fine so now I'm putting on the mounting bracket back and once I got the mounting bracket in it was time to wrestle the alternator back into place that took another five ten minutes but eventually we got it <laughs> we managed to get that back in uh, we had to use the crowbar as you can see we had to try to line up as best we could and like I said it just takes a little bit of time a little bit of elbow grease, a little bit of muscle, but eventually the bolt finally went home. Okay, so this is when we tighten them down. Um, the torque, I think the torque on this was like 45 pounds. <clears throat> Yeah, I guess I didn't show the torquing of that, but it's uh, it's like 45 foot-pounds for the alternator bolts. So you definitely want to make sure that those are at least that tight. Okay, so once you get the alternator bolts in, you just got to basically put the serpentine belt back on. Oh yeah, don't forget the grounding strap. And don't forget to plug in the, um, the plug that goes into the alternator, the one that I broke the tab on. All I ended up doing was pushing it back in. It doesn't seem like it's backing out any. So, and then here we go. Getting ready to start her up. First start up. Success. That was the quietest start up I've had in, in years on the vehicle. At this point, you put the valve cover back on. You put the, you know, and then you're pretty much done. And that's it. Thanks for watching. Um, like or subscribe. And we'll have plenty more uh, content for you guys.